obviously thinking what I'm going to say about you know who I've known for so long, such an eminent photographer, and I feel so privileged to actually be here. So one word I came I came to was activism and active, uh, and because I always associate you know obviously with the Aboriginal struggle, and these two negatives that we see here had been reproduced multiple times in magazines, pamphlets, in a kind of activist sort of. Um, uh, context and activism implies a certain kind of urgency. You've got to take it, shoot it, get it out there. You know, there's this kind of like um, this kind of demand to be to be urgent. And certainly, Juno's always, always had that in her photography. She's also had an entirely different kind of uh, trajectory as well. She's always been introspective, retrospective slowing down, quieting down as, as, as well. And that's those two kind of things, the urgency and that kind of looking inward, slowing down, have been part of her activism. And this project here, it's quite amazing, just two negatives, just two and an entire week on just two negatives. And normally, us Instagrammers, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like a second. And, 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 and press post, and then you get your likes within a minute. And if you get no likes within a minute, what, what went wrong? You know? <laughs> but two negatives, one week. And then and producing all of, this, all of this work, not an addition, but each one a unique, unique print. Uh, a different kind of ink, different kind of paper, a different kind of fibres, different parts of the print of the image coming up depending on what those combinations of ink and paper were. Sometimes it's something about the face we see, sometimes it's something about the skin we see, sometimes we see the horizon that's in the background, all that kind of uh, depends. And so these are still activist photographs, just as, just as, as, as active as they always were, but in a different mode to that urgent, get it out there, get it published kind of, kind of mode. So with those kind of thoughts, I'll head over to Juno herself, who can explain much better than I can what's going on here. Juno, you know, congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for those very insightful comments. Um, and firstly, I'd want to thank um, Judith Crispin and Sebastian. And it's a real joy to be here, you know, among fellow travellers at this place. It's such a wonderful place, really. I wanted to be showing in my work here. So this work really brings together some of the passions of my life, as Martin has said. These two images come from very early on in my work when I had a two-year engagement with the people of Mornington Island. I was working with Woomera, and we were touring the dancers. And Martin's quite absolutely hit the nail on the head by saying, it's slow time and it's urgent. And that's the way it is today too. But these two images come from being with people who really know me and trust me. And I mean, I've always made that a ground premise of my work, you know. But here I had the time to really ask people and say, what is it we want to tell people about? And they, their instruction to me then holds true now. And they said, you just show, because there were no images of Aboriginal people like this at the time that I began. You know, 79, they just weren't. So they said to me, show that we're still here. We've been here all along, and show that the culture is still strong. So that was the dictum. <coughs> now, these two images are really very special within the terms of Ladle culture too. This one called Countrymen talks about a time, remember Queensland, um, Mornington was under Queensland administration. So there was a big ceremony putting young men through the law. And here, what we have going on here was the aftermath of a battle of a week where I had to be the messenger, going up to the Shire Council people and saying, well, the elders say that unless Jerry Brown from Aracoon gets here, there can be no ceremony. And there was resistance and resistance and resistance. And finally, we got them to hire a small plane and get in there. So the emotion that you see there is that really powerful 
expression of affection and and holding together in the law and holding that law up together. This one here, which I call one with the land because the more you look at that, that family just sitting camped on the beach as we all were then on the north side of the island. And what it was was we were waiting for this sacred fish, the dinner and the wana that come but once a year in November. And we camped there for a week. And it just, the way their bodies are in the land, how at one they are with it. It just said all of that. And as well as that, that patient, slow time. And what did these images to me, I mean, it was so wonderful. The second part of this exercise was that I've been looking for 20 years for someone who could do photogravia, that early process pioneered by Fox Talbot that you could make these images that will endure 700 years is what Judith said this afternoon. But really they, they will last forever. And it's a beautiful slow time process of you know, infinite care. And to find Lothar Ostenberg in Brooklyn and spend a week with him. And just keep pushing it around and saying, what else what can we do? What else can we do? Let's do everything we can do with these images. And now to see them all together is just really a beautiful thing uh, to have arrived at that. But it also speaks of the remote communities that are so threatened now. And you know, I've always regarded, and, and, and many here will hear about, that remote communities are the teaching places of the culture. That's what they are. And they're so threatened now. So Martin's absolutely right. You know, here we are in this slow time of this ancient process. These images that are, are in slow time and urgent as well. So that's it. I'm really just delighted to be here. And now Bob's going to read you. This is uh, Juno in the dark room. We were doing, we did a book called The Language of Oysters, which took around about 20 years in, 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 um, of Juno you know, taking photographs and me writing poems. Um, and this is sort of Juno's you know, uh, dark room is right next to the river. Meshing bends in the light, just under the surface, mullet roll in the current. Their pale bellies catch the sunken light. The skin of the river erupts above the purling. The sky hangs over the boat, a wall of shattering light, smudging the wings of a whistling kite. Mud flats glow in the developing chemicals. Black crabs hold their claws up into the light of the enlarger. Yabbies ping, ping in the drain. A westerly howls through the dark room. The tide is always working at the base of the brain. The turning moon is upended, setting on the silver gelatin page. A hook stops spinning in space. Owls shuffle their silent wings and dissolve in the fixer. Shape words over what you see. The river flows from your eyes into the sink. Bulrushes hum with mosquitoes, speckle the print. The last riverboat mail run scatters letters across the surface. The ink runs into the brackish tide. 